Hey friends, good Sunday morning to you. Hope you're up, moving around, feeling real good today. Countdown toward Christmas is happening, but here in Southern California, you couldn't tell, it's back to summer. I'm telling you, we had one or two days of winter, unlike most of the rest of the country, and God help you if you're in Florida right now, we hear it's coming down pretty hard. Our prayers are with you. All right. My name is Dave. I teach people how to play the saxophone, and I want, before we get into today's session, which is going to be a quick one, I've got two more very, very cool dramatic devices that you can use to light your solos on fire, no matter what you play. Jazz, polka, blues, rock and roll, whatever. These techniques are adaptable and usable to any kind of music that you find yourself playing, except for classical. And I don't teach classical, so I'm pretty sure that classical saxophonists are not here. All right, before we get started today, Zoom lessons are still on a discount for the month of December. Ho, ho, ho. I'm offering a deep discount to my entire YouTube community here. This is basically your channel. You made this happen, and with your feedback, you direct what I put on here. All right? And I appreciate each and every one of you so much for reaching out, for contacting, for being part of this community, for making it and helping me to get better at, at helping you. That's my, my job is to leave you in a better place here with your saxophones. And uh, so your discount is DGM-12, DGM-12 for a deep discount for Zoom lessons. How they work, I'll hook up the Alta here, how they work is really simple. Once you decide that you'd like to set some time up with me, we talk on the phone first. I want to hear what you want to do. I want to hear where you want to go relative to where you are now. And then I want to make a decision. I'll think about this for a couple of days and think if I can actually design a program that will help you in an hour or two. All right. And, and that's the way we do this. Now, this is best for intermediate and advanced level students. And I'm sorry, beginners, uh, just in my opinion, Zoom does not work for the beginning saxophone player because there's a lot of moving parts when you're first starting out. You know, I want to check out your horn, make sure, you know, it's not causing you any problems. I want to see, you know, your mouthpiece, where you're putting it, how to set your read up. All of that business really needs to be done in person. And I couldn't encourage you more to set yourself down with a teacher in your area. Now, if you live somewhere, like say, I don't know, the Arctic Circle or perhaps, you know, the deep rainforest where there aren't any saxophone teachers, I will bet that there is somebody who plays an instrument, maybe a saxophone, maybe a trumpet, but that can sit with you and can play a little bit of music alongside with you and tell you if it's happening or not, okay? So beginners, find somebody preferably a sax, clarinet, somebody that can sit with you and help you out, get you over the hurdles. Once you've gotten to where you can actually, you've turned that noise that comes out of this beast into, into sound, into tone, hey, hit me up, let's do this, okay? DGM-12 is your deep discount for the month of December, which is just flying away here, isn't it? All right. Anyway, I, I promised you a short one today, and this is going to be... Um, Again, I've got two things that you can tack into a solo. You can add them on. We call them dramatic devices, uh, whatever you want to call them. But um, I'm using the alto again today uh, because of the broken wrist. And, I, you know, to be honest with you, I've got no alto sax prejudice. I'm, I'm in, enjoying exploring the kinds of things that I've been doing on the tenor sax with the alto sax. Tenor sax sits in the background. I still play it. Yes, I do. Uh, in fact, I did the Bossa Nova project all November on tenor sax, not alto. Um, I still love tenor, but alto was opening up some new doors for me, all right? And we'll talk about those in another session. Anyway, grab your horns. Grab your horns, get your reeds wet. That's all you got to do. I hope you've had your morning coffee. Uh, last time we talked, I introduced to you the growl, right? That, that kind of growl tone, that wonderful gravelly sound. All 
right. That makes anything sound gritty and nasty and bluesy. And you don't have to play it on every note, all right? You're humming into your saxophone simultaneously while you're blowing a note. Is it hard? Yeah, kind of. Is it simple? Yeah, kind of. Somewhere in the middle of that. You'll master it in a while. Just, you know, for the, the, if you really want that sound in your playing, just play everything. When you, when you practice, do that tone every time that you play. And in time, you'll get it. I played in a loud rock band for years, and that sound was the sound that they wanted. So I did it, I did it every night. Um, I've learned that you don't have to, you know, again, every note does not have to be that growly sound. You can use that in a, in a, in a way to accent the sound. All right, I just hit the top and, you know, growled a little bit there. Now, the, the, what I'm going to show you today is a, is, a, is a hack for the sound that resembles flutter tonguing. Flutter tugging is a really cool old technique, and you can find that on Junior Walker and the All-Stars. Shotgun, right? He hits a couple of notes, and he flutter tongues them. Um, who learned how to do that? Lenny Pickett. Lenny Pickett adds a lot of flutter, flutter tonguing into his, uh, his Tower of Power work, right? Uh, flutter tonguing. So, like that, which means the mouthpiece is kind of out and out of your control. I find that a way that you can do it that's even easier is to is to gargle. Gargle, you can all gargle. All of you can gargle. I know that you can, but you're not ha you have no fluid in your your throat. You're not gargling any mouthwash or anything like that. You're just gargling air and blowing at the same time. And you can do a couple of cool things with your wah wah and gargle at the same time and make an accent. Right? <laughs> Takes a little while to get used to that, and you know, you want to have your water handy because you know you will run, you kind of run dry. Uh, some teachers teach the the the, the growl tone. The, the both ways, either humming into the horn or gargling into the horn, you know, and, and you can do that too. You can gargle. I just find that pretty tedious in, instead of humming. Um, but, you know, either way it works. But I like to use them sparingly. The older I get, the more I like to use them sparingly. So I'll... I'll, I'll do the gargle instead of a flutter tongue, right? And I'll hit like a note, just an accent note. And I always, you know, follow the vocalist. What are the vocalists just, I mean, did she just sing something nasty? Then you can, yeah. All right, the other one, and I don't know what to call, I mean, I've, I've heard this called Spank and the Monkey, but yeah, I'm not really sure I like that. You know, we got a PG channel here. And uh, I'd, I'd prefer that we call it uh, maybe, uh, how about the Cannonball Shake? I think Cannonball Adderley might have come up with this. So this one starts on, on B flat. You can use your Biscay B flat and you just chromatically go up from there while you are trilling on your high E, okay? I, I can't, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna demonstrate. It's not that hard, but I'd like you to practice that before you take that out to the bandstand and, and play that. And you can all, you know, you can go up an octave with it too. So you got a couple of things that you can use that you can actually insert into your solos in places. Practice them as if, okay? Practice them as if you're going to, you know, just use them sparingly, right? There's not anything that you want to actually, in, in those two at least, that I think you'd want to do all the time. You want to have those as dramatic devices that you can use 
uh, say, throughout a solo as you build the intensity of your solo. We'll talk about that part another time. But anyway, dramatic devices for those of you who are soloing and looking for something to just to say, turn the heat up just a little bit and a phrase or two, or start out with something that's, you know, uh, you know, you, you may want to start out like, like right up here, bring it down a little bit, and then take it right back up again. Well, dramatic devices are a real good way to get the attention of your audience. All right. All right. So anyway, happy holidays, all. Zoom lessons, again, deep discounted for December. You want more information? Reach out to me, davegoodsax at gmail.com, davegoodsax at gmail.com, and use your deep discount code for December, DGM-12. Hey, you want to know what a sax player looks like? Go look in the mirror. There's your answer, all right? So listen, keep playing, practice, have fun. I'll see you in a week with uh, yet another exciting exploration of saxophone goodness, all right? Take care of yourselves. Do good work. Keep in touch. Reach out to me anytime. Dave Good Sax at Gmail. Or put, some, put, put anything in the comments below if you'd like. And hit that love button if this has helped you. It helps me to help you even more. All right. All right, I'm gone. That's all I got. Take care.